Learning isn't natural. It's an acquired skill. It's something you need to learn. And for that, you need different parts of your brain to work together to enable a child to, to comprehend what they are reading. You see, the, re the brain is a very complex organ. And for that reason, it may be easier to understand a bit about the brain if you think in terms of building the house. So reading is in the roof of the house, and that's not where we start building a house. It means that reading can only develop, if you look at the windows and the doors, in terms of interaction with other people through conversation, through listening, through speaking, through conversation and interaction with others, because that is how we develop the heart or the child's emotional well-being, to have the guts to want to learn, to acquire the skill of reading. But that's also not where we start building a house. Start building a house from the foundation. And in terms of the model of the brain, that means the senses need to learn to talk to the brain and the brain needs to talk to the muscles before a child can learn to read and write. If there's a hiccup with the senses or there's a hiccup with the muscles, it would literally be close to impossible for a child to read with a roof. Obviously, they don't read with a roof. But you understand what I mean? Reading is a higher order cognitive function. And if there's a problem in the foundation, chances are great that your child may battle with reading. So let's unpack the development of the senses. The senses develop in a very predetermined sequence. It's first the skin, then the vestibular system, then the nose and the mouth, they are the two chemical senses, then the ears and then the eyes. The eyes are the last of the senses to develop. Let's look at motor development. So the neck develops first and then the core because a child needs a strong neck and a solid core to be able to sit still and straight. And then the mouth to speak and then the arms and the hands and the fingers and then the legs and the feet and the toes. And finally, the eyes. The eyes are the last of the senses and the last of the muscles to develop. The eyes see, but the eyes also move. So if a child has any sensory challenges, it would mess up the entire learning process because step one, sensory input is not working well. How on earth would it be easy for that child to develop well? But the problem may not just be the senses, it may also be that your child has challenge with motor development. And that may come across as poor posture, inability to sit up, hyperactivity, attention deficit. See if there's a problem with the senses, there's a problem with the muscles, chances are excellent that your child may have a challenge in terms of reading, the symbols of language. So if your child is more like the one on the left that really, really finds it difficult to read, it may be that we're not meeting your child where your child is yet. And if the heart is not in reading and therefore not in schoolwork, concentration is compromised, memory is compromised, and so is motivation. And for that reading, reason and for that reason this reading program is aimed at fostering a love cultivating a love of reading it does not matter what they read cartoons are marvelous but something else that is really nice to do is to unpack your grocery cupboard reading occurs all the time everywhere unpack the grocery cupboard and with your child let the child read the label and then check the expiry date. You may be surprised what you find in your own grocery cupboard. And then let your child make your shopping list because it is a different form of reading. Reading occurs best in interaction and literally close interaction between people. If your child does not see you read, Chances are excellent that your child won't read.